Hi everyone, last episode we looked at how a neural network is able to learn complex decision boundaries by changing its weights and biases. Let's now see how we can represent the neural network using matrices. I'll start by creating a weight matrix for the connections between the input and hidden layer. Each row will hold the weight values from the input layer to a single hidden neuron. So in the first row we'll have W1 and W2 connecting the inputs to the first hidden neuron, then in the second row W3 and W4 for the connections to the second hidden neuron, and finally W5 and W6 connecting to the third hidden neuron. So obviously the size of a weight matrix, in this case 3 by 2 because it has 3 rows and 2 columns, is determined by the number of neurons in the two layers that it's connecting. Okay, now the inputs to the network will be stored in a separate matrix which I'll call X. Since this matrix only has one column, I'll usually refer to it as a column vector. Now what we'll do is take the weight matrix and multiply it by the input vector. Following the rules of matrix multiplication, we start by multiplying the values in the first row of the weight matrix with the corresponding values in the input vector, and add them together. This gives us x1 times w1 plus x2 times w2. We can then move on to the second row of the weight matrix, giving us x1w3 plus x2w4, and then finally x1w5 plus x2w6. So we now have a nice compact way of representing the way the input values are fed through to the hidden layer. We're still missing the bias values though, so let's make a column vector for those and add that to our equation. Matrix addition is very straightforward, we just add the corresponding elements together. So B1 gets added to the first row, B2 to the second, and B3 to the third. Finally, we need to pass this through our activation function f of x. This just equates to passing each of the values through the activation function individually. What we've ended up with here is a 3 by 1 matrix, or column vector, which of course corresponds with the size of the hidden layer. These values are the so-called activations of each of the neurons in the hidden layer, and so I'll name the vector A1. Okay, now to feed these activations through to the next layer of the network, we'll need another weight matrix, this time with a size of 2 by 3, as well as another bias vector. And then we simply do the same process as before, giving us A2 is equal to f of w2 times A1 plus b2. Since we've now gone through all the layers in the network, this is our final output. Note that this output is exactly the same thing as what we arrived at last episode, the only difference is that it's now in matrix form. Okay, so let's now implement this in code. I'm going to be using Python for this series, version 3.6 in particular, and we'll be using NumPy arrays to represent our matrices, so make sure you have NumPy installed as well. Okay, so I'll create a new file, call this neuralnetwork.py, and save that in my digit recognition folder. And here I'll start by importing numpy, call this np for short, and then let's create a variable called layer sizes. This is going to be a tuple, and if I put in here say 2, 3, 2, that would mean a network with two input neurons, three hidden neurons, and two output neurons. And if I added say a 5 here, now we'd have two hidden layers, one with three neurons, one with five neurons. All right, I'm then going to create weight shapes. This is going to be a list holding the shapes of each of the weight matrices. So the first one should be three by two, then five by three, and finally two by five. So in here I'll create a shape A comma B. So A should go from the second element of layer sizes to the end, and B should go from the first element to the second last. So we can say 4A, B in, and then the values of A will be layer sizes, and I'll use slicing to say from element with an index of 1 to the end, and then the values of B will be layer sizes uh, from the start to the second last element, or element negative 1. Now, in order for this to work, we need to uh, zip these values together, just using the zip function, like so. All right, so let's just print out weight shapes to make sure this is doing what we want. So I'll run this, and you can see we've got a list with these shapes 3x2, 5x3, and 2x5. 
let's now go ahead and create weights, which is going to be a list holding all of the weight matrices. We can just fill all these matrices with zeros for now. So I'll say numpy dot zeros, and then we need to pass in the shape. So I'll just say S for S in weight shapes. All right, I'd like to print out all of the weights. So I'm just going to do a little for loop for W in weights, print W, and I want these each on a new line. So comma, new line character, and then I'll run that. Let me just expand the console a bit here. And you can see we've got our three weight matrices. Now, initializing all the weights to the same value is actually a terrible idea because it turns out that when the network is adjusting its weights during training, if they all have the same value, then it will change them all by the exact same amount and it won't be able to learn anything interesting. So instead, we'll be using random numbers. What often works well is to draw these random numbers from the standard normal distribution, which as you can see is roughly in the range negative three to positive three, with most values being closer to zero. Okay, so back in the code, instead of numpy.zeros, we'll be using the random.standardNormal function. So if we run this now, you can see these matrices are filled with random numbers. We can then move on to creating the biases. So remember, these are just column vectors with the same size as the layers, and there's no bias for the input layer. So you can create biases is equal to a list. And for these, uh, we can just set them all to zero. So I'll use numpy.zeros. And uh, we need a tuple for the shape. So this will be s comma one for s in layer sizes, not including the first layer. Let's now put this into a class. So up at the top here, I'll say class call this neural network, and then I'll define an initialization method. So that's two underscores in it, followed by two underscores, and then we need a self parameter for the instance of the class. And let's also then have layer sizes as a parameter. So I'll delete layer sizes from here. And let me just indent this correctly, and I'll delete the uh, print over there. And in front of weights and biases, I'll just add self dot, like so, just so that these uh, variables can be accessed from elsewhere in the class. Next up, I'd like to create the activation function. Uh, if you recall from last episode, we're using this sigmoid activation function equal to one over one plus e to the negative x, where e is just the constant 2.7 something. So I'll define a function called activation, so I'll take an x and return one over one plus numpy dot exp of negative x. So the exp function just returns e raised to the given power. I want this to be a static function. So I'll just add the static function decorator here, like so. I now want to create a method for feeding inputs through the network. The output of this is going to be the network's predictions. So I'll call this predict. It will take in self and a, which will initially be the inputs to the network. We then want to loop through all the weights and biases. So I'll say for w comma b, and then we'll zip together self dot weights and self dot biases. And then we can say the activations for this layer are equal to self dot activation of the matrix multiplication, so numpy dot matmul between the weights and the previous layer activations, or if this is the first iteration of the loop, then the original inputs to the network. And then onto that, we just add the bias factor. Finally, we can return A. All right, I'm going to save this and to test it, I'm going to create a new file, which I will call maybe just program, save that in the same folder as the neural network. And I'm going to import neural network, call that maybe NN for short. And I'm also going to import numpy once again, as NP. 
and then I'm going to create layer sizes over here. Just set this to whatever, maybe 3,5, 3,10. And then I want to create some dummy input uh, to use. So I'll just set this equal to numpy.ones. And the size of this needs to uh, correspond with the size of the input layer here. So I'll say layer sizes 0 by 1. And then I'm going to create the network. This is equal to nn.neural network passing in the layer sizes. We can then say that the prediction is equal to net.predict, passing in our input. Finally, let's print out that prediction. So I'll run this, and since I set the size of the output layer here to 10, we've got these 10 values being printed out. So you can imagine for doing digit recognition, then we could treat this first value as the likelihood that it's a zero, the next as the likelihood it's a one, and so on. So here it looks like this 0.9 is the uh, highest value, so we treat this one as a zero. All right, I'm going to delete this printout over here, and I'm going to go back to the neural network script. And uh, just to demonstrate something quickly, I'm going to create a variable called z. I'm going to set that equal to this stuff here that's being passed into the activation function. And I'll just print out the first value in that vector for each layer. So I'll go back into the program, and if I run this, you can see getting values like negative 2.6, 0.3, I'll run this again, 1.7, 2.2. Uh, the point is the values are relatively small, but now what happens if I increase the layer sizes, say to 1,000 inputs and 500 hidden neurons? If I run this now, you can see I'm getting values like 39, negative 19, I'll run it again, negative 34, 18, you can see I'm getting lots of large negative and positive numbers. One thing to keep in mind here is our activation function. We prefer our inputs to the activation to correspond with a relatively large slope, because as we'll see later, the magnitude of the slope actually affects how fast the network will learn. So if the input to the function is too small or too large, you can see the slope is really flat, and so the network will learn more slowly. So, going back to the neural network class, we want these weight values to be smaller when there are more inputs to a layer. So we can divide each of the values in the matrix by S1, which is the number of inputs to that layer. Now, perhaps a little unintuitively, it turns out that we actually want to take the square root of this number, which we can do by raising this to the power of a half, I'm not going to go into the reasoning behind that, but there will be a link in the description if you want to read up on it. The point though is that now if we go back here and run this, you can see we're back to our nice relatively small values, 0 0.68, 0 0.17, negative 0.9, 0 0.8, and so on. And if we change these back to their original sizes and run this, nothing's changed, they're still in the same sort of range. Okay, we're basically done for this episode. I just quickly want to go back here and remove this print statement, save that, and that will be all. So see you next episode. Cheers.